you have past life visions or do you, do you know what you might have been in a past life? The same thing I am now. Had a lot of flames in the pay. Two fell like love. Had a lot of dream by decay. Two woke me up. Say I was a king in the past. Few problems plus. Had a lot of women hold it down. I don't know. We ran it up. But I know who I want. Ooh. I know that my eyes are locked on you. Would I trade places with this person? <laughs> no. Would this person trade places with me? You <laughs> right. Because my life's amazing. <laughs> I'm driving foreign cars. I don't apologize. I'm f***ing foreign bros. I don't apologize. Then I had moved to Seattle. I was in Seattle for like another like six months, just recording, just making music. And it was just beautiful. The world watching me evolve. Took a break from the world. I'm not receiving phone calls. Still get nervous around police lights. But all events governed by the law. Want to search without probable cause, go and get the dogs. I go boom in a Lambo. It ain't difficult to handle. And just going to this new level in life. You don't take a chance. You ain't had a chance. You're making a plan to lose. Don't need a security blanket or safety harness abandoned school. I took an advance and paid it back and made an advance and moved. I know how to stand and greet a man whenever he walk in the room. Unlimited bands, come on command, ain't changing my attitude. Lil' ton, you know that I love you forever, could never be mad at you. But you ain't want to win as bad as I want you to win. I had the scoop. The tan that in inside the bag, I bought you to blast and shoot. Now, King B, I bought your chain. They making it rain on you. I know that you got a good heart when they talked about you. I prayed for you. Now, I had my heart scar about a woman that I used to call my mama. You know if I f with you, I'm going to war with God behind you. I bended to you on whom I was talking about on fly again. My wing got bruised, healing my wounds. I done got fly again. Now, all you hoes are thinking of the past. I can supply 10. Metric ton lows coming in from the island. That bitch you wish she flaw as hell. Focus on ass shots. That bitch I'm with she with the cartel. Focus on stash spots. A lot of diamonds. I'm about diving. Bread when the chain glistening. Chicago jail went straight to the cell with all of the gang members. Now my ain't T.R. Green Street. She one of them gang members. Mama Duck. I love you to death. You one of them gang members. A lot of time when you a real nigga. You don't get the respect you deserve. So for y'all, I rock a lot of pretty feathers. I'm tatted real bad with a cartel sway. Pants hanging on my ass and I know you see me watching. I ain't worried about your man. Tell your dude, bag back, shorty, bad ass fat. Hold up, can I take you shopping? Like who says the shit that Kevin Gay says? What does love mean to you? No one's ever asked me that question. It takes more courage to be vulnerable than it does to be a tough guy. Hope I answered your question. Uh, oh, yeah, that was yeah. fucking amazing. This is Kevin Gates, I'm here with Hip Hop DX. Don't expect what you don't expect. Kevin Gates is one of one. As an artist, he has a unique style from his flows to his melodies, and he has spoken powerfully potent truth in his interview since he first stepped into the spotlight. His word is powerful, his music is powerful, and so is his purpose. I can honestly say that this is the most excited I've been for an interview in a really long time, simply because I know the possible impact these words could have on someone else out there who's listening and needs to hear it. Kevin, we appreciate your time, your energy, your music, and you being here. And I wanna ask, human being to human being, how are you doing? Um, I'm, I'm charging myself back up because I just finished like filming on camera and it takes so much, the camera takes so much energy from you. That's why the Native Americans didn't allow themselves to be photographed because it takes a piece of your soul. So a lot of times when people be like, can we take pictures? I'd be like, no, sir. I love you. God yeah. bless you. What, what is a, a recharge look like for you? Are there certain things you do? on a daily basis to make sure. I'm doing sure. it now, I'm recharging. <laughs> and is your, uh, I know you've talked a lot about your your throat chakra being more open lately. Has that continued? Do you feel like you've been yeah, able to? When you, when you don't speak truth, I wasn't speaking truth. And my, my throat started getting a little because <clears throat> I wasn't speaking truth. I was holding it in. Like the body is amazing. It knows everything that needs to happen, but we don't listen to the body. We get in our heads and we overthink things and we go against our own body. I don't even ask my head anymore. Like, what do you think about this? I ask my heart, what do you think about this? How does this feel? And if you quiet and you listen, 
Your heart chakra will talk to you. How does it feel when I put it on? Like me doing a song with this person, how does it feel when I put it on? Mm, I don't like the energy. Yeah. If I go into a restaurant, how does this energy in here feel? I don't like it, I'm gone. Yeah, the gut instinct. Is that is that something you have to train yourself to to become more aware of? No, it's a it's you have to start trusting yourself more. I trust myself. Cause every time I don't listen to myself, something bad happens. Not excuse me. Stuff of the law. Nothing bad happens. Every time I don't trust myself, I have to relearn a lesson that was already a law. But once you relearn that lesson and it becomes a law, it's a law. You don't transgress it. Some people still relive and relive and relive the lesson because they haven't learned the lesson to move on from the lesson. What's the latest lesson that you've learned that's become a law for you? I'm I'm still in the lesson right now. I'm learning to love again the stranger that was once myself. That's powerful. What, what does that mean to you? We don't love ourselves. Everything we need is internal. Nothing external adds value. Nothing. One thing I, I, I've really connected with and I've, I've seen you talk about recently is this idea of running away from your, your purpose or knowing you're special and knowing you're great, you know, ever since your birth, but having this self-sabotage mentality or running away from it. Like, do you remember the moment? <laughs> me too, me too. And it's been recent. Like, but do you remember the moment where you kind of stood in that greatness and that purpose and, and understood like, okay, I'm going to accept. I'm doing it now. I'm standing in it. No wavering. Not this time. This is the last time I do this. I'm not repeating this life over many years. And I feel like I've known you from somewhere before you have, but you won't know me again because I'm not repeating. Do you think like, is this your last life? It's my last time. <laughs> do you have past life visions or do you, do you know what you might've been in a past life? The same thing I am now. Had a lot of flames in the past, two fell like love. Had a lot of dream by the K. Two woke me up, say I was a king in the past. Few problems plus. Had a lot of women hold it down and we ran it up. But I know who I want. I know that my eyes are locked on you. Do you feel like, do you, do you have some sort of feeling of what it? Uh, an emperor. Mm. That's what I am, an emperor. Because you did say anywhere you go, you would be a leader or you, you'd find yourself in a leader. I'm an emperor. Position. I'm an emperor. That's what I am. Kevin gets me. They just, they wait, they wait on, they've been waiting on me to just take the throne and be what I'm supposed to be. But I was afraid to. I'm talking about universal law. Universal law governs all events. I'm not talking about, never mind. No, 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 no. Let's go. Let's go there. I'm talking about universal law. Yeah. Laws, yeah. real laws. You can't break them. You can't transgress them. Many people feel like they can, but it's great armies that's been super great, strong armies, tough armies, but they couldn't conquer small countries. You look at Afghanistan, they've never been conquered by any other country in the history of Afghanistan. And they don't have the superpower that all of these the technological advances, so-called technological advances that other people have. They have a universal law that they adhere to. It's certain tribes and like Native American tribes and it's indigenous tribes that have never been conquered. And they don't have the technological advances that the technological advances makes people go backwards because you get to rely on tech and not on the soul. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts on, because I struggle with this with humanity's purpose, let's say, and, and us, our constant need for evolution and our constant need to innovate, even like within music, you know, we keep pushing genres forward. We keep creating new sounds. Like, do you think that this We're is- We're not creating new sounds. Everything that is once was and everything that was is. 
My people ask me, where do you get your melodies from? From the celestial court. I go into the celestial court. I sit in front of the Supreme Council. Sometimes I hear something I like because it's never words. Spoken words are primitive. Yeah. They speak in a language which only can be detected by the heart chakra. So if your heart not open, you'll never hear it. You'll be deaf to it. There's a lot of people walking around deaf and numb. They don't feel. That's why so many people do drugs. Yeah. Cause I'm a, I used to smoke more weed <laughs> than a chimney. <laughs> I used to smoke more than a chimney at one time in my life till I realized the power of breath work. Mm. Everything we needed already in us. When was the first time, and I know you've said that, you know, meditation comes in, in all forms, but when was the first time that you feel like you consciously started to meditate? Through martial arts. They told me to envision the fight before I had to fight. And they, they tricked me into meditating, <laughs> but I, through martial arts. And from there it became like a practice that you... Used Everything in meditation through uh, movement. I get lost in my breath when I'm doing it. What, what does presence mean to you, to be completely present in the moment? I'm present here, but I'm present in other dimensions also. So I'm beyond the veil and I've just learned how to integrate it. I had to realize that everybody not going to see and feel what I see and feel and vice versa. Yeah. It's all based on perspective. But my perspective is whenever I'm somewhere, I use it as an opportunity to learn. Like I noticed, like people say, I was watching this interview and they say, when your eyes go up to a certain way, you're lying, this is the creative, this is the lying. And I'm like, I don't believe it. You don't know what I see. That's just your perspective of it. So I was just about to really think like where my eyes were looking in between, but. <laughs> I, don't, I don't believe any of those things. I don't. When did you first start to believe in something bigger than yourself? Because I saw you talk about, you know, when you were younger, being more in touch with the spirit realm and certain things, but. Did you kind of come to terms with that at the time or? Everybody has, they just try to write it off as something else. Uh, you got other people that if you believe in something greater than them, then you don't believe in them. You know, everybody fighting to be the world's superpower and that's out of fear. I got all this power schmauer. You still get scared at nighttime. But when I lay down at nighttime, it's like I'm re-entering the womb. I embrace the darkness because I'm re-entering the womb. This is a time for me to heal. Creativity thrives in the dark. The darkness is our friend. Yeah. They got all these big lights and camera shmammers at the house. <laughs> I don't need that. I can feel when something, I can feel when something isn't how it's supposed to be. Yeah. Cause I'm in tune. Yeah, yin and yang too. It exists on on all fronts. I can feel it. Well, I want to talk about your music too, um, because I think all of these things connect. And you know, when that's me. It's we were just talking about light and dark. No, my energy is just super light. Literally, as we were talking about it. <laughs> Any restaurant I go in, the lights flicker. Things weird things happen around me. It's it's a powerful energy. Like I can forgive me. I'm so not sorry. No, I, I can feel it. But you were talking about in an interview, poetry and like how that was, you know, one of your first loves. And that, you mentioned this poet and forgive me if I pronounce uh, the name wrong, but Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling. Rudyard Kipling. I don't know if that's how you pronounce his name. OK, well, we're, 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 he had we're, we're, this song. He had this poet, this this poem called If. Have it on the paper. And right it was now. it was like complete balance. And I don't live my life based on that point, but I can go anywhere. I can walk with kings. I go to Dubai, Abu Dhabi. I sit with princes and eat. I've been invited by the royal families to eat and things of that nature. And then I go to the poorest people on earth. And it seems like those people are the most happiest people. I go sit with those people. The people that don't have much are more happier than the people I met that have all of things in the world. Why do you think that is? Because when you don't have anything, all you have is you. 
when you have all of these things, these external things become the source of your happiness. So once these ex external things become the source of your happiness, you always need more external things to make you happy. And it's a culture. We teach our children that for your birthday, I'm gonna get you a toy. So you are looking forward to getting this toy. For Christmas, I'm gonna get you a toy. And that translates into the way that we have relationships with people. Toys, toys, toys. Transactions. You know, it's just, I'm gonna deal with it until I experience a greater level of boredom. Then I'm gonna get something else that's gonna be a new thrill and eventually it gets old. But the best things in life are really free. Just spending time, talking, having a conversation, throwing the baseball, <laughs> fishing, hunting with the bow and arrow. With the rifle, that's easy. <laughs> you go spread some corn on the ground and sit up in the top of the, the deer stand and eat Oreo cookies all day and <laughs> kill Bambi. That's, that's not hunting. Hunting is when you stop. You had to become the environment. You had to take the earth and put it on your body, the mask and the other smell. You had to be, you have to become your environment. Yeah, yeah full unity. You had to connect to your breath. You had to sit still. You become, you scan whatever it is that you hunting. You download the consciousness of what you, what you hunting. You begin to see in the darkness. And at the perfect moment, And it's a blessing because it's not, it's not, we've developed such a relationship that it's not like you, you allowed me to take you so I could feed my family. So thank you. It's this weird symbiotic relationship between everything and everyone and consciousness. Everything is connected. Even the trees, like if another tree is dying, you see a trail of mushrooms and what they do, they tap into the root system and they send energy to the other trees. They they connect the roots under the ground. They connect, constantly reproducing. I, you you might I, I normally wouldn't bring this up. Well, I do all of the all of the fruits and vegetables look like sex organs because Mother Nature is constantly reproducing. Think about it. Yeah, now I'm like, <laughs> now I am thinking about it. The mango has a clitoris. The flowers have a clitoris. All, all of the the birds and the bees, the owls and the trees, the vegetables that are just all shaped like sex organs. Yeah, because Mother Nature, Pachamama, Mother Earth, she's constantly reproducing and destroying, so she can reproduce. Yeah, yeah. Creation and destruction go hand in hand. I feel like after like, after chaos, there's always opportunity. I feel like with your life, that's like a constant theme. Like No, it's just other people make it that way. They just they just make it that way. They make it controversial because it's outside of the norm to them. Yeah. And really, most people envy the freedom that I have. Most people wish they could be as free as me, but they can't because they have a fear of being offensive to somebody or job security, schmurity. <laughs> You know, and they look at this guy like, man, this guy's just free, he doesn't care. I wish I could be like that, so I'm gonna project. And I had to learn that when people are saying negative things, they just project. It's them, yeah. Yeah, it really is just- Say, if I'm being intrusive, buddy, I'll leave. I wanna go to the beach and do yoga anyway. Yeah. Like, what do you do? I do yoga, yeah. It, uh, makes, it makes me feel good. I used to work out as a way to deal with trauma. Now I work out to make myself feel good. I like to feel good. What is your workout schedule like these days? I had got so lost in working out, I had really kind of took a break from music. Then when I started back making music, it's like I had went to a whole nother level with it, a whole nother plane. Like who says the shit that Kevin Gay says? Like I took a pain pill. Got bangs of steel, a Navy SEAL. I'm in the game for real. Ain't where I want to be, but it's paying the bills. Like, I ain't where I want to be, but it's paying the bills. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everybody that listen to that song, they like, yeah, I ain't where I want to be, but it's paying the bills. Even a billionaire, I ain't where I want to be, but it's paying the bills. Because you ain't even got that freedom that you think you want. 
What do you think the realest shit you've ever written is? Everything I've ever written. <laughs> the realest. What, what, yeah, what I just said. I took a pain pill. Got veins of steel, a Navy SEAL. I'm in the game for real. I ain't where I want to be, but it's paying the bills. I'm in the game. I'm in the industry. I'm in the game for real. I'm, I'm somewhere where people strive to be. They look at me like, man, I wish I had your hands. You throw them back. If I had your hands, Kevin, I'd cut mine off. You'd throw them back. If you dealt with one-fourth of the things that I had to deal with, you'd throw my hands back. I suffered the greatest pain ever. When you when you're an emperor, well, let's say a king, yeah. if if I was a king, when you're a king, when a woman gives you her most intimate embrace, is it your heart she pulls close to her, or is it your crown? Which one? When you meet people, do you get the real them? Because the best actors get the best parts. So I'm just asking, like, so so, if I was a bum on the street, everybody that I meet would be genuine. Unless they came out with a big camera trying to show me how much yeah, of a humanitarian yeah, yeah. they were. <laughs> you know, then it'd be different. I'd be a little skeptical then. But I went out and had, was passing out cheeseburgers one time to the homeless. Because whenever people make, whenever something make me mad, I get pissed the f off. I go feed the homeless. And it's like, and you, you translate that energy into something positive. It making me feel good. I was doing that and one of the homeless people said, what program are you with? <laughs> said, I'm not with a program. I'm just Muslim. And that's one of the best acts of charity is just to feed people. And it it's so sad though, a lot of Muslims, some of them are proud of me, the other ones say, you shouldn't make music. I'm like, why? It's my testimony. It's what God delivered me from. You shouldn't have tattoos. You shouldn't do this, you shouldn't do that. Do, do, you, do you judge the messenger or do you listen to the message? And to be Muslim, it only means to be a believer. That's it. It's just a believer, I believe in a higher power, that's it. I know you studied like all of the, all of the books and all of the religions in some capacity is there something that you found like a through line between all of them that you think you know we can all agree on as it's gonna be kind of like contradictory toward like like church goers but like in the christian religion they teach that you should love god love your neighbor as yourself and love your enemy and I know a lot of Christians that they would judge a person that worships Satan or sympathize, what they call it, so sympathizers of Satan or Satan worshiping. Really, so I just wanted to know, like, what's the big deal with this shit? I want to know. So I know some people that are Satanists and they really don't worship Satan. They like atheists. So it's never like, so and then when you read the Bible and you read about how Satan whatever the, the story was it bleeds when he said i will not bow to man for they don't even love you did he not tell the truth because we don't love god we say we do but i like being with these slur these slut horse slurs <laughs> doing drugs listening to music getting tattoos and all of this shit the shit that they say that's of the devil that's the shit i like you know what i'm saying so do i really love god so I just I'm, I'm just asking like it's really kind of contradictory in a, in a, in nature like when we say that like we like I look at my tattoos as a story everything I've been through I inked it on me I earned this but if I was if, if I was to say I'm a I'm a born again Christian like tattoos will be wrong even if you get the 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 cross and all of that it will be wrong but for me it's it's a journey it's everything I've been through. And I like music with that hard bass. I love that. And people be like, strip clubs and all that's of the devil. But I like to see women shake that ass. Like that's like, we say we love God, but we don't. We love the devil. If that's what you call the devil. That's it. And I think that's where people get it twisted is they call certain things. But 
We don't look at it like that. We believe that all all great men came through, and I'm not saying I'm not saying I'm a Satanist, but a lot of the things that they said made a lot of sense to me. I'm not a Satanist, but through understanding, I'm not judgmental toward whatever you believe. I look at it like I strive to live the best life I can, but I'm only human. I'm not perfect. So I don't judge anybody. Like I learned like I learned that a long time ago. I never know who my blessing gonna come through. Because like I'm be honest with you, the people who beat me up and tear me down the most are the people that look like me. The people that look like me. Like those are the people that kick me when I'm down and say the worst things about me. It's never other races, it's just my race. It's people, whatever race, whatever that is. It's, it's, it's my own people. Yeah, well, I mean, it, with the tattoo thing, I think it's interesting, like, my tattoo, because I felt the same way. I'm, I'm Jewish, but I, it's also... Shalom, also Baruch Hashem. Thank you. My son was, uh, all my family, like, I, I'm just saying, this is my first time saying this, all my family Jews. I just happen to be Muslim. Really? So you've, like, been around the, the culture? Like, my son was circumcised by a rabbi, bared the foreskin, like, my sister, she a Jew. So in the Jewish religion, tattoos are looked at in a similar way. It's wrong. You're not supposed to have it. So I was going, I was going to get them, and I was, you know, talking to my mom, and I talked to my tattoo artist who happened to be named Jesus. And That's crazy. Which, you know what my name is? Issa. My name is Jesus. Wow. And that's cr and you and you I said. I asked my grandmother, why would you call me such a thing? <laughs> it's a lot of pressure, but. You said you you have like lineage though, right? In your family. I could trace my lineage all the way back. I'm not talking about through sending your spit samples in. That's bullshit. I'm talking about through our family almanac. I can trace it back and I can present it to you and show you. From my hair, cheekbones, skin, I can show you everything. Yeah, and it's it's like you're you're walking with with the same power in your words, I think, you know, from the outside looking in. But you know, this tattoo artist is telling me like what people think is wrong with tattoos is because in the Bible it talks, there's a passage specifically, but it talks about how, you know, the unholy people, you know, the dirty people uh, who worship Satan and stuff like that were getting tattoos. But what they were doing was actually like putting certain markings on them that were, you know, marking of the devil. It was like in context of those specific people at the time, you know. All of this stuff has to do with context and time and over time. And I think it goes back to what you're saying at the beginning, full circle, where like instinct is more important than all of that stuff. And trusting yourself in these process and knowing who you are and if that's a part of you. Religions, they're great institutions. Like I tell everybody, they're great institutions. And an institution is great for starting. They're great training wheels. They're great. But how far do those institutions go. I mean, we as human beings, we evolve every day. And it's like, when you operate out of your heart chakra, it's a never ending journey. When my eyes open, mm, how do I feel? Should I go work out? Should I not go work out? What, sir, what would serve my body? Nah, I'm just gonna go take a hike today. I'm gonna go hike in the mountains. I'm gonna just drink me some water. Is my body really hungry for food? I don't want to eat right now. I'm not really hungry. See, a lot of things come out of habit. You know, I'm just going to take me a spoon of sea moss and I'm going to start my day. You know, it's just different. Like, I'm not really hungry. So I don't eat when I'm not hungry. I don't drink when I'm not thirsty. That's just me. Like, I pay attention to myself and I started doing that. That's why I say prison was the greatest blessing for me because I got to spend a lot of time alone with myself and I got to discover things about me that I never knew and I love my own company I love to go to the gym by myself and work out by myself because that's my me time that's my therapy some of my best music I come up with at the gym I listen at the instrumentals in my headphones I'm singing loud people try to talk to me I'm still singing I'm not worried about you I'm, I'm in good company right now I'm with myself when I'm in the car alone, I talk to myself. And that's how I process things. Like if somebody says, I'm Gage, you're a bitch. 
<laughs> is this really that serious? No. Is it going to stop me from earning currency or revenue? No. Would I trade places with this person? <laughs> no. Would this person trade places with me? You fucking right, because my <laughs> life's amazing. I'm driving foreign cars. I don't apologize. I'm foreign bros. I don't apologize. I, I was going to ask you, because you say you talk to yourself and ask yourself things like, what's the last question you asked yourself? Should I walk out of, uh, I was the filming for Up Rocks. I was like, should I walk out of this right now? And something told me, no, stay the course. And I stayed the course. This is the most amazing video and film that they will ever have in the history of having. It's going to be life changing for people that see it because they're going to see the energy that I put through. And I shouted them out. I was like, yeah, you know, this is an Up Rocks exclusive. Because it is an Up Rocks exclusive because I'm not about to paint the same picture over and over again. I'm not a printer. I already painted the picture. So it's about the vibe and how I'm feeling. I channeled a different energy and something different came out. And it was beautiful. And the people that got to experience it, fuck what the camera saw. The people that got to experience it, they experienced something so beautiful, an energy that was out of this world. Because I got to experience it also. It was beautiful. I, I can't wait to see it. I, I, I saw a little bit of it. It was beautiful. I appreciate your energy. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you for having me. Um, I do. And I appreciate it. If, if hey, you know something? What? You can leave this in if you want to. I don't care. But I really, it had to happen, but I wish that you didn't have to endure all the hardships that you had to endure just for being who you are. And I say that because I know you one of them ones like me. And this life is hard for people like us. It's super hard. I could cry right now. I was about to cry. It's super <laughs> fucking hard. I cry every day, two, three times a day. But it's beautiful. It's more like tears of joy now when I cry because I'm releasing. That's how I heal. They say once you cry, your spirit is cleansed. So I cry two, three times a day. But it's just like feeling your energy. I wish you didn't have to go through what you had to go through, but hey, I, nobody, I, nobody, nobody told me that the road would be easy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, but I, I, I feel you know, I genuinely I do. Um, but I, I feel like like you, where I think this is probably my last life as well. Yeah. I've had certain signs of confirmation that so, you know, I'm thankful for whatever. We, we will never see a physical death. I don't care what people say. We would never see a physical death because the body is energy, even the skin. Everything on the body reheals itself. You get a cut, it reheals. We only age due to stress. I don't care what the medical people say. You're fucking liars. I don't care what you say. You don't know because I'm a different species from you people. <laughs> Have you read the book um, Conversations with God? It's this book and it, it might have been about me. It might have been about you. But this guy- We translate over into light because I have met those people. They're crazy, I don't know. No, I, I, I believe it. I have met yeah. those people. I got an older brother and he can come in physical form and he can transition into light. And that came through the different realms of the digestive system. It's the dense energy that allows me to be visible to you. If my energy wasn't dense, you wouldn't see me. It's times you walked up on people. I didn't even see you fucking standing there because you were vibrating on such a high frequency that their eyes couldn't see you. It's like, hold a piece of paper up. If I do this, you feel the yeah, wind. Yeah. But did you see it? No. So does that mean it wasn't there? No. You just couldn't see it with the human with the human eye. And we're all, and, and energy, literally the only thing distinguishing us is energy particles being closer together or more dense, density, like you said, yeah. The density and the non-density. And it's like, I just been noticing, like even with my yoga, my journey, I've been able to open my hip flexors in ways that I haven't been in the past because I've been releasing relationships, people out of my lives that have been baggage, people that I love that I was afraid to tell them the truth. Like, listen, I love you, but I don't like what you do. And you're hindering me from going where I need to go. 
So I need to release you with love. I love you, but I release you with love from all spiritual agreements, all spiritual contracts, all soul ties, and all energies that no longer serve my higher self. But I love you, but we can we go no further because just having that attachment is keeping me from being what I'm supposed to be. And since I've been releasing a lot of baggage, my career has just went back through the roof. Why is that? It's the energy. And I find until you release certain energy, you don't have room for new energy in your life. And once you make that decision, it's a closet. When you, if your closet full of clothes, you can't, you don't have room to yeah, receive new blessings. Yeah. You gotta clear that out so you can receive. You can make room to receive the blessings. And I've been receiving them. What does love mean to you? No one's ever asked me that question. <laughs> um, perfect love, non-judging. Perfect love is non-judging. Like I even told a guy that was talking, okay, we're ready. Hey, listen, I love you, stop talking to me. And I'm only telling you this out of love because you're making this systematic. You're taking a systematic approach to something that's spiritual it's a vibe let's feel it let's enjoy what we do let's not look at it like business let's have fun hey when i visited google and i visited youtube i asked the people over there at the headquarters i was like so when do y'all go to work you know what they told me what? whenever we want i was like <laughs> what i would love coming to work i say so what time do you have to be at work whatever whenever we get here i'm like what the fuck? but the productivity rate is way greater because they take showers, they get massages, they can eat, they have sleep pods. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> I mean, you technically have that. You can go to the studio when you want. You can shop when you want, right? I do, but sometimes it takes me putting my foot down to have that because with me dealing with the people that I deal with, they have a systematic approach. They're part of a system. True. It's not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing because I can say no to certain things. Like I agreed to this. Yeah. Like a lot of things they, they present to me, I say no. <laughs> but it's album time. So I'm like, you know what? Yeah, I'm promoting the album, but I'm not promoting the album because whatever the album does, it does. It'll be out June 17th. We didn't even talk about the album. <laughs> Don't even care. Don't care, Schmear, whatever. It'll do what it's supposed to do. I could, I could run around the country and, and say, Kevin Gates for president, Kevin Gates for mayor, boom by yay, Ali, boom by yay. I could do all of that shit. If it's only meant to sell one album, it only sell one album. But all of the other, the other dimensions, they love the music that I've been making because it's a frequency. They drop in and they listen and they love it. Is there so, something you're most excited for when it comes to the new music? I'm excited to share it with the world. I mean, I've gave snippets for so long. I took like a almost two, three year break. Yeah. I just left. I wasn't even gonna come back. I was in Colombia for like five months. Then I went to Puerto Rico for like six months, almost a year. Then I had moved to Seattle. I was in Seattle for like another like six months, just recording, just making music. And it was just beautiful. The world watching me evolve. Took a break from the world, I'm not receiving phone calls. Still get nervous around police lights, but all events governed by the law. Wanna search without probable cause, go on, get the dogs. I go boom in a Lambo, it ain't difficult to handle. Hey, if not, <laughs> if not disrupting the peace, I got the right to not be hassled. Big Moroccan Empire, I got, uni I got diplomatic status. I'm universally balanced. Once ones can govern the universe within, you can govern the universe without. I got diplomatic status. New can am and I ride her like a banshee. Fun fact about Gates, I like to be romantic. She come be around me, then I'ma be her daddy. Native American land, the forest is enchanted. The forest is enchanted. It's like I go in the forest by myself in the wilderness, in the woods. I can feel like I'm being watched by the tree spirits. And they reveal themselves to you once they trust you, but you gotta spend a lot of time in nature. I don't even like stepping on leaves sometimes. But then I'm like, you know what? 
they sacrificed themselves so I could, the leaf people sacrificed themselves so I could have cushion. Thank you. I just do everything with gratitude now. Yeah, I, I, I'm not trying to be a tree hugger, no, I, but I, I do hug trees. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I can't believe I'm saying this. I literally, I, I've listened to this podcast. It was like seventh grade. I remember hearing this Buddhism podcast. This is before I even really knew what Buddhism was. And it was talking about trees. Man, that shit. And the cycle and how we- You ever like, like studied it? Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Man, that shit makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Detachment from all- Cessation of all desires is the end of all suffering. Yeah. Like that shit makes a lot of sense. Like connecting to the breath and just even connecting to the breath is a sign of gratitude. So many people take breathing for granted. What if you stop? Yeah, literally. It's, and it's the most present you can ever be is just like, sometimes you sit and you're like, oh, I'm really stressed. You take a breath. You're like, oh, forgot about that. <laughs> like, um, The Navy SEALs. I love the Navy SEALs so much. The shit that they do. You know they die and and are born again. They drown in the water. They drown. Oh, yeah, yeah, And yeah, they yeah, get yeah, brought yeah. back to life. Just so they know, yeah. So they know what it's like to be unconscious and to, and to come back. They had this breathing technique that they do. I'm talking about where they, where they breathe. Even in tough situations, it keeps them calm. Yeah. The Green Berets do some shit like that too, but it's funny. It's just it's just different. Like the shit that the Navy SEALs do. I want to take that SEAL training. You would Kevin Gates Navy SEAL training would be great. Man, I swear to God, I kind of did it because I know a Navy SEAL. So you did like so what, what I kind of did, you did some training. Like I just asked them a million questions. Yeah. Like because I think the shit that they do is so cool. Like they become one with whatever environment they in. They become one with it. They different. I, I feel like I need to tell you this because I got I got a message of this and I don't know where else I would use it, but I feel like this is exactly what you're talking about. Have you ever heard of immortal jellyfish? No. You talking about the ones that you could cut them in half and they grow in the two? I, I don't know if this is the same one. It might be, but the, this is like one of the few species that literally live forever. And it's and they, they do it in the same regenerative way, regenerative way that you're talking about with the Navy SEALs where they basically grow to a certain age and then their cells go back to baby cells and they just regrow in the same way that you, you know, you die and come back to life in that Navy SEAL uh, um, exercise. It's so weird. I'm going through that right now. Like I died, like my ego and everything, all of the, I bow to my ego cause it kept me safe. It got me where I am, but I died and I was reborn. Like I died and I, I've been reborn and I re-entered as a baby, as a child. I re, I'm re, i relearning everything again. But you have the child like, like the, the what we call naive is also just appreciation for life. It's gratitude, I wanna learn. Cause I didn't know at first, I learned one way and that was survival. The only way I knew was survival. And now I'm learning how to adapt and adjust and coexist. And I'm learning really from being in nature because everything has its place in life and they all respect each other. Like even the lions, they don't just go around killing. And then when they do attack the herd, they take one of them that's sick or weak. They don't just go get the strongest of the strongest. So it's a cycle, it's beautiful. Yeah, it all and- Even lions do yoga. You know, they get up in the morning, they stretch. <laughs> I never thought about yeah, it. They stretch yeah. in the morning, they do all of it. Yeah. Well, you, you mentioned cycles and I thought that, you know, and, and only as much as you're open to speaking about this, but I thought it was really interesting with, you know, Kendrick's new album and you had recently opened up about, you know, some of your past traumas and he kind of has that line where he talks about breaking generational cycles. And he, you know, he's- like What kind of generational cycle? So- Cause I, I, I hadn't listened to it his music in so long because I haven't been listening yeah. to no music. I've been off. So, But do I think he's a great lyricist? Of course. I said it in a song one time. I said they scared of Kendrick Lamar. Then I said that boy must have read All the War. That boy said he was king of New York. That was on that I Don't yeah, Get yeah, Tired yeah, part yeah. two. Well, I said that a long time ago because he was so, he was going at everybody top with that battle and shit. I said, ooh, he dangerous. 
You can't. He dangerous. <laughs> Yo, he yeah, he's he dangerous. He's different. I remember in that interview you were talking about like, listen, if Kendrick comes at me, I'm I'm cool. I'm, I'm, no, I never said those things. That was, that may have, may have been par- yeah, paraphrasing. I, I, I can't I can't see I can't see him coming at me because no. I'm in my own lane. No, I can't. Like yeah. I'm in my own lane. I'm in a lane to where you gotta really go out your way to come at me. Yeah, because I'm in my own lane. I can't even see nobody saying I got beef with Gates. I can't even see that. But I promise, if it go there, I'm gonna give it everything I got. Even if it's a battle that I know I'm going to lose. Because I go to war with God. That's just in my nature. I mean, even Hebrew, he who wrestles with God. I'm going to wrestle with God. I don't care. Like, that's just me. Like, I just, I don't care. It's about, it's about getting the point across. And I feel like a wrestle with God is sometimes a wrestle with yourself. Like, your most God-like self. Or, yeah, you know. I'm wrestling. I'm going to wrestle every time. I'm, I'm going. I'm going to give it all I got. Whatever. I don't care where I'm at. That's like even like when people say, man, if somebody tries to rob you, just give them the jewelry. No, you got to blow my brains out and take it off me. I ain't giving you nothing. My grandmother gave me this chain. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, I'm not. No, I see that on, uh, on Friday. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> My yeah. grandmother gave me this chain. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me, I'm so not sorry. Don't, yeah, so not, yeah. I'm so not, so not sorry. sorry yeah. Nah, though, no, but I can't see me coming off this. Because this, this, these are the family jewels. These jewels hold power. They've been returned unto the rightful owner. I can't see me coming off this. Like, even this ring, I can't see me taking this off. Yeah. I can't see it. Because I worked so hard just to get back to just to get just to get back to what I am. All of these things were stolen from me. And I just not regained it. The jewels, the spoils of war. You gotta kill me to take this. <laughs> Cause like uh Inky Johnson said, when you work hard for something, you got a different type of attachment to it. When somebody work hard for something, yeah. you're gonna have a cold day in hell before you try to take it from it. When shit get hard and difficult, he don't he don't go blow weed. He don't go smoke weed. He don't give up because he got a different type of attachment to it. He said, you're going to have a cold day in hell before you take it from him. He said, we live by this. We die by this. No surrender. No retreat. We don't retreat. Every man must search his own soul. And I live like that. I move no security, no nothing because I live like that. I worked hard for this. Hey, I'm, you gonna have a cold day in hell for you take this from me, and I mean that with all due respect. Well, I'm personally not gonna try to take it. Please honestly. don't. <laughs> please, please no, don't. No, please, don't please don't hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> please, I'm not a tough guy. Please don't take my lunch money. Please, God, no. <laughs> they saw behind the camera. I hate bullies. <laughs> I swear to God, I hate bullies. I, that, that that's another thing I had to stop doing, like taking up for people that was getting bullied. Like you'd step in. <laughs> that's most of my problems. I always come. <laughs> I just can't see that. I can't watch somebody just pick on the weak. I hate that. Hey, buddy, why don't you pick on some of your own <laughs> fucking size? <laughs> I just hate that. Yeah, and they never did. It'd be like, it'd be like the people that people say the nerds, them be like the best people. Them like my best friends, they always got that interesting shit to talk about, thought provoking shit to talk about. And this doofus over here. It's kind of weird when you even think about the concept of it, like literally making fun of somebody for trying hard in school or liking something or being passionate about something. It's just an odd concept. It's crazy, like it's crazy, I'm like, like, I'm like, Fon- that's why I like Fonzarelli, because Fonzarelli wasn't a bully. He was cool. Yeah. And he was also, like, super smart and intelligent. And he gave that blanket to, like, he allowed the nerds or the people that you would call nerds, really the intelligent people, to just be themselves. Like, he provided that umbrella. And yeah. I met that guy. 
Really? Yeah. What was what was the fonts like? Hey, you know what? I asked him when I was on the airplane. I say, "Are you um?" He was like, "Yeah, that's me." <laughs> I say, "Man, hey." <laughs> hey, and he was so nice, and I ain't know he knew who I was because he's an older guy. Yeah. I'm like, "Man, it's a blessing to meet you." He like, "It's a blessing to meet you." Also, I got a picture with him on my phone. That's amazing. Who's the most surprising fan of yours, or what most surprising conversation you've had? Uh. When Adele had reached out and wanted me to say happy birthday to one of her friends, and I'm like a super big fan of Adele, like that's my baby. We're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna make music one day. One day we just gonna be somewhere and just vibe off each other and just hello. You know we just go. <laughs> Tears will be shed to that song for sure. I cried to that song. Oh yeah, I I cried to, I cried to the new Adele album. I thought I could just take a casual nap, but I I cried I cried to this song. <laughs> I cried to this song. Hey, I'm, I'm I right did. there with you. <laughs> and that uh and that uh Google Dolls, that Iris, Iris yeah. And I give up forever to touch you, cause I know that you feel me somehow. You're the closest to heaven that I'll ever be, and I don't wanna go home right now. When all I can Cause I don't think it made understand When everything's meant to be broken I just want you to know who I am <laughs> Hey, listen, that, that's an emotional tune. I love that song. That's an, is it, would that be your karaoke song? Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's so many of them. Even, hey, I had did a remake of uh, Wonderland. By Oasis? By John Mayer. Oh, jo oh, your body's a wonderland. Yeah, Incredible. he didn't clear the song for me. <laughs> Wait, there, it exists somewhere? John, it's, when was this? It's, it's on YouTube somewhere, but I did a song that your body is a wonderland. But I did, that's all I said, your body is a wonderland. That's all I said. I love John Mayer. We need John to clear the sample, though. Man, if he <laughs> did, that would be amazing. I just thought it was like, cool, I'm yeah. saluting you. But they sent me one of them things on YouTube and told me to take it down. I was like, wow, dad. Watch, I bet you he sees this. Don't care. No, I'm it saying just, you're going to get a feature on the next album. Don't care. It just wasn't meant. Like, if the energy aligns, it aligns. If it doesn't align, it just doesn't align. Yeah. My brain didn't stop at my, I'm connected. So Wonderland, that song wasn't my greatest song ever made. It wasn't. No. You know, we always making something. I like every song I make until the next day, until I make a new one. So do you hold do you hold any attachment to any as like a favorite based on the moment you were at in your life? Yeah, I love that cartel swag. You don't take a chance, you ain't had a chance, you making a plan to lose. Don't need a security blanket or safety harness or bandage. That was like me saying farewell to everybody and just going to this new level in life. You don't take a chance, you ain't had a chance, you making a plan to lose. Don't need a security blanket, a safety harness, a band school. I took an advance and paid it back and made an advance and moved. I know how to stand and greet a man whenever he walk in the room. Unlimited bands, come on command, ain't changing my attitude. Lil' Ton, you know that I love you forever, can never be mad at you. But you ain't wanna win as bad as I want you to win. I had the scoop, the tan and fin inside the bag I bought you to blast and shoot. Now, King B, I bought your chain. They making it rain on you. I know that you got a good heart. When they talked about you, I prayed for you. Now, I had my heart scarred by the woman that I used to call my mama. You know, if I fuck with you, I'm going to war with God behind you. I been to you on whom I was talking about on Fly Again. My wing got bruised, healing my wounds. I done got Fly Again. Now, all you hoes, a thing of the past. I can supply 10. Metric ton lows coming in from the island. That bitch you wish she flaw as hell. Focus on ass shots. That bitch I'm with, she with the cartel, focus on stash spots. A lot of diamonds, I'm about diving, bread when the chain glistening. Chicago jail went straight to the cell with all of the gang members. Now, my ain't T.R. Green Street, she one of them gang members. Mama Duck, I love you to death, you one of them gang members. A lot of time when you a real nigga, you don't get the respect you deserve. So for y'all, I rock a lot of pretty feathers. I'm tatted real bad with a cartel swag. Pants hanging on my ass and I know you see me watching. I ain't worried about your man. Tell your dude, bag, bag, shorty, bad ass, fat. Hold up, can I take you shopping? <laughs> I just, I just, I just something about that song because, like, you know how you, 
you want to date this girl and her parents like, no, I see you staring at me, but you afraid to be for me, making your parents happy. Major League made them believe, check my batting average. I work my way from bricks to crumbs. You know, that ain't average. You know what I'm saying? It just, it just, you know, heard about how your last boyfriend did you, but he was a buster. You was in the athletes back then, you needed a hustler. I was fat as hell, I got a shape, I'm flexing my muscle. I'm the world's sexiest gangster that one ever change. You know, I just, you know, I just, it was like me making my debut to the world. It's the rebirth. <clears throat> it's the rebirth. And it just was beautiful. I went to Puerto Rico, the Laila Encanto. I'm talking about the island of enchantment. I went over there, and the people that know me, they know what that island mean to me. La Isla, they know what it mean to me. So I'm over there just with my shirt off in the slums. And they just love it. They respecting it. Places you can't even take cameras. They loving it. No security, just by myself. My energy is so big, it's protecting me. My presence is my protection. And they just saluted it. It's just beautiful. I said, I'm going to die for this shit. I love this shit. Kevin, don't go down there. You're going to die. Well, I guess I'm going to die this fight. <laughs> I went skydiving for the first time in Puerto Rico. What was that like? Jumped straight out the plane. <laughs> did five backflips. I say, hey, once that door open, it's game, it's Super Bowl time when that door open up. Were you scared a little bit or? That's the fun part. <laughs> like fear, like I guess boxing teach you, like if somebody throwing punches at you, you don't wanna go toward it, <laughs> but you gotta go toward it. Yeah. So it's like, ooh, bitch, the camera's on. Hey, I'm gonna do five black flips. Watch this, <laughs> you know. And that's just that just always been my move. I jumped off this rock in Jamaica. Well, the girls that were with me, they jumped off the small one. Then they invited me to jump off the high one. The the fellas that were with me, I love you guys, but you didn't jump. <laughs> Talking about somebody got to tell a story. I say, hey, listen, let me tell you something. I'm gonna get out there every time, homie. Every time, I'm going to get out there. This is a testament to my character. I'm going to get out there every time. Leadership. I'm going to get out there. I don't care if it's scary. That's, that's the fun part. I was so scared. You were scared? No, I wasn't scared. I was scared to death. And I get a rush from that. We conquered that. We came. We saw. We conquered. What did it feel like when you touched the water? Oh, my God. Like a whew. I had to get stiff. Yeah. yeah, it was fun. Overcome. Do you have? Is there anything that you're still? I want a bungee jump. They got this dude, this white dude. He was like, "Hey, I love you guys," and just fell back. I said, "Oh, bitch, I can't wait to do this. I can't wait." <laughs> Cause you you release. It's like you go to it. You unlock shit in your brain when you face your fears. The first, the first time I ever got on stage, I, I forgot all my words. I was like, <laughs> "Where was that? What, what, walk me through where you had in your life." I was in uh, I was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, at the Plantation Inn. I think it was like a little small gathering. It may not even have been a hundred people, and I was just so scared. And I knew all the people in the crowd, but it was like I was scared to death. I was so scared. I forgot all my words. You like look in the crowd, or was it just like the moment was just? I jumped in the crowd, but that was just my way up. Like, I'm gonna be down there with y'all so y'all can't judge yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, it was, I was scared. I forgot all my words. And look at you now on stage. I still get nervous before every show. Really? I take three shits. <laughs> I, I take a pregame shit before every interview. I took hey, I take three shits before I get on stage. They know bring back to back to back, or is it in between? There's it's like I take a shit, then I'll be good, then I'll take another shit, and once I take that third one, it might just be a lift, only two, not that much. It feel like it's so much though. It feel like oh god, I'm not gonna be able to perform, and it's a lift two. So, okay, so I, I need to uh, ask you about this one picture because... Oh, God, it's me. How many shits did you take before you went on stage that night? Maybe two or three. Maybe two or three. And I've been doing it. But it was beautiful that the world appreciated me for 
you know, my jumping capabilities. My it, jumping ability. It was ex- it was just electric to watch. You saw it? <laughs> no, no, no. I wish I got to see it live, but I'm saying just that's not that's not Photoshop. No, I'm in the good. air. That's yoga. Light body skill. I'm in the air with it. I'm walking on air. I will walk on water, but haters gonna say it's only because I can't swim. <laughs> That's why I don't walk on water in front of people. One of these days. They got monks, like they train, they walk on water. And there's ones that can levitate, I'm pretty sure too, right? Or like like a little bit. It's just like body skill, it's your prana. You're just using your prana to lift up off the ground. A lot of time when we heal in the nighttime, a lot of people don't know that when the body heals itself, you levitate off the ground. That's interesting. Because it's re- literally regenerating. Re- Some people call it what? Sleep paralysis. Mm. Do you remember your dreams? Yup. They're vi- vivid? Not all of them, but I remember the ones that matter. I done had dreams and then they come true. What's one that like stands out to you that came true? Man, I had these dreams. It's, it's weird. I have all kind of weird dreams. And then they end up happening. But they don't happen like exactly how it happened in the dream. I will say something, I don't even want to trigger nobody with this. I swear to God, but the person, the person that was with me that night, he with me right now. When the last time me and Nipsey Hussle was together. And then two days later, he died, he passed, he changed form. And what I told him, and the person that was with me was was with me that night that I told him what I told him. Wait, what did you, you told Nipsey something? Yeah, I told him something special. Every time we was supposed to make work or make music, we never recorded. We were just sitting there and talk all night about like interesting shit. Like dude was very intelligent. He was tapped in. He was tapped in. He was tapped in. It was refreshing. Every time I talked to him, it was like I was talking to myself because the things that he would say, he would present them in a way that people be like, yeah, that's cool. But me, I'm so passionate and don't give a f- I'm animal with it. You know, people look at me like, you're weird, you're crazy. But we basically saying the same shit, if you really think about it. But people judge me. And we're all one, so I need judgment. Yeah, people judge me so much, you know. People just, people just love to judge me for no reason. I ain't never do nothing. But you know, but dude was, he was tapped in. Is there something that he said that stands out to you that you still carry with you? On um, one time when I had seen him at um, Disney World, I was with my family at Disneyland and he was with his family at Disneyland. Like, it's so crazy, this was so crazy. When I seen him at Disneyland, we was both fasting. Most people don't know this, he used to fast, like go long periods of time without eating. He was fasting. And then the second time, well, excuse me, not the second time, but the time before his passing, his changing of form, like, we was both fasting at the same time again. And I was like, man, I'm just breaking my fast. He was like, me too. Come have some champagne. Wow. We both had on the same thing. Just a bow tie, a white shirt, and black pants. And you didn't even, like, that wasn't planned. You guys just ran into each other. I ain't trying to, I, well, I told him some funny shit. I say, man, say, bro, when you get to talking that shit, you be psyching a nigga up, you <laughs> gonna go catch an indictment. And I was standing there in the picture like this. And he just had his arm around me dying laughing because I was like, cool. Cause I make little funny faces and shit. Like I do that with my whole boy. Like I see a bitch walk by, I be like, you see her? He be like, yeah, cool. <laughs> I just do little stupid shit like that with my partners. That's just something I do in private. I say, man, say, bro, when you get to talk of that shit, you be having me want to just psyched up to go, you be making me want to go catch an indictment. Cool. <laughs> and everybody be laughing. He be laughing when I tell him that. Cause I'm just myself. Yeah. And there's like, I got, me being an artist, I got so much respect for every other artist I meet. they would be like, man, we need to lock in and do something. Hey, just hit me when you free. Let's not make it business. Yeah. If you fuck with me, just fuck with me. Let's yeah. not make it business. Yeah. Cause I'm me and I don't judge. And if I have a relationship with you, I'm here for you. If you need somewhere to live, come on. You can't be bringing no holes in and out my spot cause this is a sacred place. You know what I'm saying? You can't be bringing these different spirits in and out of a house. But if you need somewhere to, li- st- to stay when you're in town, come on. Yeah. I have extra rooms here. All right, well, if you're watching this out there, it's not for everybody. The offer isn't open to everybody, but- No, nah, it's not. <laughs> I would never do that. I'm a no. Who? 
But you know, in the industry, that's just talk. Yeah, man, you can come stay with my. It's just that's not that's not. I know who's real and who's yeah. not. I call it the L.A. pump fake. The reach the hand and then pull it back. Nah, they got some real ones out there that I got yeah, real sure. relationships with. Like, did you know what's weird? You know who calling to check on me the most? Hmm. It's the people that the industry would say that's fucked up people. They call and check on me the most. The one like the the people that the yeah. world says fucked up. Then the people that call and check on me. The people that's supposed to be all these great. Yeah. They run from me. You and you have real relationships with these people. Like yeah, I'm authentic. Yeah, and that's I think I think that's why I wanted to close the interview with just you being authentically yourself. Yeah, I'm authentic. Now, I could love you, but if the shit you got going on around you could cause harm to me or it's disruptive to my peace, I'm gonna have to let you go do that because I'm over here and I love you enough to tell you the truth. And you said that in, in the song where you're talking about like, you know, you they didn't want to win as bad as you wanted them to. Yeah, you don't want to win. And you sometimes you have to let go of that energy because yeah. if you're carrying too much, it's literally just baggage that you're... Yeah, I could put that over here. <laughs> Final question. Um, and I, I guess... Final answer. Okay. Who is Kevin Gates? Kevin Gates? You want me to be honest? I do. I don't want to say this. Only if you want to say it. You want me to say it? I do want you to say it. Isa Islam, Jesus Christos, Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ. God is within all of us. Yeah, the Christ consciousness. I think... Uh, See, most people get lost in the Christ consciousness. It's the consciousness. Yeah. And we all are that consciousness. No, we not. We no, all not. We all don't have that consciousness. Oh, you're talking about Christ consciousness specifically, rather. Yeah, than the rebirth. Ex explain the rebirth. that a little bit. Um, if you never had a death and been born again, I'm talking about the death of the ego, the death mm -hmm. of the old self. No toxic masculinity. Brr, alpha male shit. Like, no, I eat you. Like, stop playing. Like, you just been hurt, so you, you're you overcompensating for something that's for a lack of something. That's when masculinity becomes toxic. My grandfather was very nurturing, and he was a monster. He was a real monster, but he was very nurturing. He taught me how to cook, taught me how to fish, taught me how to make my bed. He was nurturing. He didn't fuss at me, get up, you a man. No, nah, man, you all right, shit, just do it again. That was his approach. You all right, do it again. He was gentle with us. But when he was teaching us how to fight, he taught us, you know, aggression, controlled aggression. So like, a lot of times I just be seeing this alpha male movement and this feminist movement. No, that's not God. The holy divine feminine energy and the sacred masculinity together it's balanced. That's God. Yeah. Mother Earth, Father Sky. It has to be balanced. You can't be like, man, women do what I tell them. Or you can't be a woman saying, oh, men adopt. No, it had to be balanced. We all been hurt. We can't bring our past traumas into new relationships. And it has to come from within that balance, too, because we have to have balance between the sacred masculinity and divine. Once you learn, once you learn that God is not just a, a man, King Dingaling sitting down, and you realize that all great men, even if you believe in Jesus Christ, came through the womb of a woman, you look at women different. Because once you look at them different, you know, you look at yourself different. Through yoga, I learned like how the right side of the body is masculine, the left side is feminine. It has to be balanced in order for you to get 100% productivity out of the body. You have to be balanced and in tune with yourself. If you're not, you're not gonna be balanced and in tune with the universe. It's been a journey because I, I like I look at some of my toxic traits, and most of that shit was out of fear. Man, that, that was out of fear. I don't operate out of fear anymore, and I'm never afraid to be vulnerable because it takes more courage to be vulnerable than it does to be a tough guy. Hope I answered your question. <laughs> that was a perfect answer, and I, I'd say a perfect interview. Um, I'm weird, but I'm winning, bro. I, I'm weird too. We're all weird, but you're. Yeah, it's the normal people. I'm fucking the. I, I don't. I don't want to talk to normal people. Me either. <laughs> so by the book. <laughs>
I think we should close with a prayer for the world, though. A prayer for the world? Yeah. Um, usually when I pray, I do it in English, but I usually say, Almighty Creator and Maker of the heavens and earth. Um, I thank you for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us in this life and the hereafter. I ask that you forgive us for all our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. I ask that you be with all of our brothers and sisters and all living species and all of the beautiful realms and dimensions that you created, those lost, found, incarcerated, those free. And then I say like, in all of the holy names in the celestial court above, even the secret names. And then I ask, I say what I want. Like, I just thank you. Allow me to have a beautiful workout. Allow the rest of my day to be beautiful. Amen. Amen. It's just simple. Amen. I mean, I'm always in prayer. I, I'm always talking to God about shit. Cause this shit that I know I didn't get myself through alone. So it's just like, I just do it like that. Like I'm thankful. Yeah. I ask for forgiveness. I ask for all my brothers and sisters, even all the living species, because you know, you can't say you love God and not love the creations that the creator has created. And I just look at it like that. God is together as a man and a woman. And when we look at God as two becoming one and governing all of the universes, it make us take a different approach to life. Like James Brown would be like, it's a man's world, but it wouldn't be nothing without a woman or a girl. So I tell people that, like all great men came through the womb of a woman. Like, yeah. It's the holy divine energy, holy divine feminine, sacred masculinity together. It's God. They govern together as one. They probably have arguments sometimes. <laughs> That's, I feel like it's this constant shift, like the yin and the yang. It's like, it's always in balance, but it just shifts different. But it's perfect harmony. Like yeah. we, we imbalance things. The things that we do imbalance things. Everything is balanced. It was already balanced without us. Yeah, yeah. We are parasitic in nature. We take and take and take and never give back. Uh, most of the things that we do are powered by greed, gluttons. That's why during the pandemic, the world was actually healing itself in nature without us. It was. We destroy shit for no reason. We just want to dissect, take a little piece, take a little piece. Next thing you know, I don't even want to say it. What? This dude, <laughs> the dude was, he was doing, uh, he was saying, yeah, these fucking scientists always want to dissect, and dissect, and take a little piece, and take a little piece, and they're fucking destroying it. Next thing you know, you're not gonna have no more dick left. They just <laughs> a little piece of the. T I was like, they dissected way too much. Yeah, I was like, oh, no. but it made sense. It made sense. But we, but we also have the ability to continue to create, and you know, we, we're thankful for the creations that you put into the world through the music. It's not me. I'm not never gonna take credit for this. This is this is God working through me. I'm not perfect. I'm not shit. I'm not nothing. To be honest with you, this is only by the grace of the most gracious, most merciful. This is only by the grace of God that I'm even where I'm at right now. Cause I'm supposed to be doing a life sentence or did. I can honestly say that. Everybody else, with all due respect. You didn't start thugging until you got famous. I was never not thugging. Unfortunately, I was never not thugging. I've been thugging my whole life. Unfortunately, that's why the texture is different. I hate to say that, but that's why I know that where I'm at right now is by the grace of God and God alone. I'm not supposed to be here right now. Or you're exactly where you're supposed to be. Yeah, I'm exactly where I'm <laughs> supposed to be. Cause I was grateful. All of my friends are either dead or doing life sentences. The people that I grew up with. I don't have one friend on the street. Not one. Not my best friends that I grew up with. Like one house down type of shit. None of those people are living or free. It's just the truth of the matter. That's a lot of, a lot of trauma to deal with too. Well, it was a lot of trauma to deal with. 
but they live vicariously through me. They proud of me. I got partners to tell you right now, man, I'm supposed to be here. I'm a monster. I wasn't living right. I'm supposed to be here. I forgave myself, but I'm I'm supposed to be here. They'll tell you that. Yeah. I know monsters. The things that they've been through that turned them into monsters was unfortunate. That's why I like the movie The Joker. It was so sad just to watch that because he wasn't a monster. It was what he went through. That's why, you know, I, and the one person he didn't smash was the dude that treated him like a human being and saw him for him. I just can't do that. It's like I recognize when somebody hurt me, cause you know I know what it is to feel pain and be dying on the inside. I know what it is to commit suicide or attempt to commit suicide, which I have attempted that. So I know what it is. So it's like when I meet people, you know, I always I'm mindful of what they're going through or what kind of internal pain they might be going through. Yeah, because you never know what it means to somebody too. Just being kind, just smiling. For just, real, I just know. treating a person like seeing a person for them. Seeing a person for themselves. Like I got a brother that, I'm talking about he was super big. He broke up with his girlfriend, got back on drugs. He was small. He was like, I don't want to come to the gym. I'm like, listen, I love you. I don't judge. We're going to get it back. We're going to get it right back. Fuck that shit. Wild Biters got muscle memory. We're going to drink water and get it right back. That's the beautiful thing. You could look at how you was, and now you can put positive energy back into your body. And he pulled up and met me at the gym because he was just yeah. juiced up. He ain't want me to see him like that. But I'm like, no, I don't judge. Yeah. He was like, man, your music, it got me through so much. I said, yeah, people like you listening to it got me through so much, brother. Thank you. Thank you. He always tell me, I love you. I love you more. I'm talking about when you see him, that bitch look like a Nazi. I'm talking about big, <laughs> big old white boy. I'm talking about tattooed all over his head, everywhere, just tatted up. But he got a heart like gold. He a real teddy bear. I, I read somewhere that Tra was it Travis Barker actually inspired you to get tattoos when you saw him? Yeah. Have you gotten to talk to him about that at all? Man, I, you know where I see that dude at all the time? In Arrow One. Our children used to go to the same school. <laughs> Our children used to go, I'm not going to say the school, but our children used to go to the same school. And he used to always be an arrow one. And you know what he talk about? What? His children. All the time, that's what he talk about. He pull up, black on black, everything. We got the, we got, well, one of our, he got a, he a car collector too. And it's just, yeah, it's just different. He got a, he got a good heart. It be the people that look fucked up and, Look like what the world will tell you, stay away from them. Be the best people. Yeah. It's almost like a test. If you break through the wall that appears there. I don't operate out of fear because when I see people with tattoos, I don't get scared and shit. I'll be like, hey, that's cool. <laughs> Dude, he's got a gun. That's cool. <laughs> that's, that's, like when I, that's like when I seen the cartel, like them dudes got out in Vegas walking tigers and shit and tattooed all over their bodies. I was like, oh shit. That's fly. You have a combo with them? What? <laughs> ASAP. ASAP. Man, come with us, homie. We listen to you. Come on. So you're the night in Vegas. Nah, right? we was at a fight. Nah, uh, it wasn't a night in a, it wasn't a night with the cartel. It just they they was cartel. Shit. <laughs> that don't mean shit. I'm in a car too. <laughs> I got my own car. They got their own car. It was just mutual respect. It was beautiful though. They just tattooed up, just. You know, they was getting off the private jet, walking a tiger. I say, oh shit. Tatted it up, everybody, money. I'm like, yeah. They had to the fight, I'm at the fight. We in the Lewis store, I'm in the Lewis store. I'm doing what y'all doing. And we just started talking. And it's just, just beautiful, because I like all that kind of shit. That shit fly to me. Yeah. When you see somebody with tattoos everywhere, Bad bitches, and you like what the? It looked like it on no, poster. No, it looked like it ain't supposed to be like that. But I'm, it ain't. It ain't had to be. What's understood don't need to be explained. I'm. Oh shit! I like this man. Them niggas doing they shit. I like all that kind of shit. I, I don't know that shit. It's exciting, you know. It's like man, come with us, man. Nah, I'm okay. I'm in my own little world. But it was just beautiful <laughs> yeah, being yeah. in the atmosphere that. 
beautiful. I like I like all that kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's exciting. Seeing that type of shit inspired me to get, you know, exotic shit. You know what I'm saying? You, just, you got some animals? I got some I got an exotic uh livestock license. What how do you get that? I got it. It's um he he wants you to curtail this 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 interview. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> he, doesn't want, he doesn't want us to talk anymore. It probably go on for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. We'll we'll close. But I got I got um I got some camels. I got I got a blueberry farm. I got some I got some exotic livestock on my reservation in Mississippi. You you and Ross should have a. Well, well, Rick Ross has a zoo too. I was doing that before Rick Ross. He had a promised land, but he didn't have he didn't no have farm. Yeah, he didn't. Yeah. He wasn't in the agriculture. I grew up farming, and I love Rick Ross. I had camels, llamas, not llamas. Excuse me. I had camels, alpacas, Nigerian dwarf goats, chickens. I got a lake fully stocked. Yeah, most people get cow's milk. I got camel's milk. <laughs> That's the next level. It's the only thing, it's the only milk that a lactose intolerant person could drink. A camel could go three months without eating or drinking, go to the ocean, drink salt water. The males and the females got a little nipple on the side of them. You could fill your canteen up with fresh drinking water from a camel. He was a blessing to us. We supposed to begin and end every day like a camel. They begin every day and end every day on their knees in submission. I know that's our cue. They want us to leave. No, no, no. Okay, no. It's it's the universe. The camera's about to die. That's what we got. <laughs> but all right. Before we before we close off, um, thank you so much. You know, thank I you appreciate everything. This is Kevin Gates. I'm signing off. <laughs>